Hello again. After discussing in our previous video about the importance of counting with a comprehensive planning framework such as SUMP in the implementation of electric mobility solutions, we will now look at a few methodologies and tools that can guide decision making all towards the implementation and development of sustainable and multimodal low carbon mobility systems. One of these methodologies is the Framework for Strategic Sustainable Development or FSSD. This framework helps decision makers, institutions, society at large and other stakeholders attain long-term goals that are informed by robust sustainability principles and it does so by following a five-level approach. Starting with an understanding and recognition of mobility's role within a wider system and how it affects other topics such as urban development, the environment, quality of life and health among others. The framework also defines four sustainability principles addressing natural, social, physical and economic elements to guide the definition of effective objectives and to achieve um, sustainable mobility at large. Now, on the strategic level, the FSSD presents a backcasting principle to ensure a goal-oriented approach and avoiding the limitations that can be brought by path dependencies. Envisioning a future to then explore the different roads to reach it can be instrumental on planning for innovative mobility um, and the different solutions brought by new technologies. It is a, an effective way um, to handle uncertainties and to steer deployment um, in alignment with local policy goals. And then on the action level, the framework takes an operational approach to prioritize a strategic action towards the target set. And finally, it also addresses the need for contextualized tools and um, all to, to, to both monitor and reach uh, the objectives defined. Um, similarly, the avoid shift improve approach presents a framework to structure policy measures. The development of strategies to limit greenhouse gas, em greenhouse gas emissions is of utmost importance uh, in the transport sector in general, but in particular for the deployment of electric mobility. This can be achieved through avoiding and reducing the need for motorized travel shifting to more environmental friendly modes and improving energy efficiency of transport modes. So when planning for e-mobility implementation, the presented frameworks and methodologies and tools can really contribute to ensuring an alignment with policy goals and a successful deployment of services that address societal needs effectively. To do so, planning efforts need to be well coordinated and actions need to be taken to address different sectors and topics. For instance, the huge potential of e-mobility to reduce greenhouse gas emissions depends crucially on the energy source, the primary energy source. It can only be realized if charging is predominantly achieved using renewable energy. Also, the allocation of public space road, for example, needs to be considered. And um, after all, an electric car consumes as much space as a conventional one, right? 
a simple shift from conventional cars to electric cars would only result in cleaner congestion and won't really address other aspects such as safety conditions. Already there are several, several examples of cities which have successfully addressed e-mobility and the implementation of such services through strategic roadmaps. Um, these are a few examples of SUMPs from cities such as Stockholm, Aachen, Barcelona or London which have followed a structured planning framework to take informed action towards sustainability. With SUMP as planning framework, there are key possibilities for integrated strategies on e-mobility deployment. For instance, the, coordinator, the coordination of actions with other sectorial plans, such as air quality plans, the prioritization of public transport as backbone of urban mobility systems, and of course, setting targets um, for interoperability and multimodal electric services. Um, also, for example, the alignment of efforts in the deployment of infrastructure, the electric grid charging infrastructure, for example, and achieving this requires good cooperation with stakeholders. Um, and among these stakeholders, we of course need to include logistic operators, fleet operators, um, and then on the societal level, the inclusion of e-mobility in SUMP also requires the participation um, of citizens and all key stakeholders um, to submit requests for, for charging points, for example, or to consider things like accessibility and gender topics. E-mobility requires two ecosystems coming together, energy and mobility, and such sector scoping requires new cooperation methods and capacities. A structured approach must be followed to identify and engage effectively with all relevant stakeholders, both internally, for instance, within the planning departments, and externally, um, through public-private um, cooperation and, for example, with the academia as well. And to do so by considering the perspectives of all users, such as commercial fleets, um, users of shared services, urban residents without parking spaces of their own, or uh, long-range commuters, for example, it is essential to, to really comprehend and understand the needs, preferences, concerns of all of these potential users, and to translate this understanding into user-centered infrastructure and services. For instance, addressing public charging for e-vehicles while still upholding objectives for multimodality and sustainability. This requires effective planning to identify parking locations, ensuring visibility and adequate provision of services that consider the relationship between charging duration, for example, the location chosen, user behavior, and other challenges uh, such as identifying good business models and funding sources. It could even be the case that the analysis performed shows that a reduction in the amount of charging points uh, for e-vehicles is needed. For example, in Norway uh, there was a countrywide free parking uh, for EVs um, established in 2016 as the market, market matured and the amount of EVs increased. Besides, uh, also, EV drivers were stripped of their right to drive in bus lanes in Oslo in 2015. This because um, such rights were leading into increased congestion in, in bus lanes. In conclusion, it is always essential to consider the context conditions to make informed decisions on e-mobility uh, and on the implementation of new services. And to do so, a comprehensive planning should be followed, ensuring 
the correct integration with other aspects of urban systems. Uh, this includes uh, things like electric networks, their load capacity when you're going to be defining, for example, charging standards for the vehicles. So I would really recommend if you're more interested in learning about such planning frameworks and how they can be implemented to improve the way that e-mobility is deployed and planned for, uh, go to um, the guidelines that have been developed, for example, um, the guidelines for sustainable urban mobility planning launched on their edition number two on 2019. And as we have also um, mentioned on previous modules, there is uh, an electrification topic guide that really addresses the topic of electric mobility and how it can be successfully included in such planning efforts. Thank you very much and see you next time.